Welcome to Valor Latino, a comprehensive look at issues and interests to Milwaukee's Hispanic community on News Talk 1130 WISN. Here's your host, Perfecto Rivera. Welcome to Sunday morning to the Valor Latino program. I am Perfecto Rivera, your host. My guest and friend with me this Sunday morning is Miss Catherine Ramirez. And Catherine Ramirez and I, we hooked up through the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Saul Newton, our friend there, is the director, if I can, or executive director. And I called out to him to see if I could get him on the show, and he suggested that I give you a call. And so here we are, Catherine Ramirez. Welcome. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Well, you're, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, as I usually do, I've been doing this show for a while, is I ask my guests to share with us a bit of their, you know, their background, sort of catch us up to speed so our listening audience can learn more about who Catherine Ramirez is. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm not originally from Milwaukee. I'm actually from Houston, Texas, and um, I am uh, the third generation um, uh, my father uh, being Mexican American, my mother uh, family is from Spain, and so um, I grew up in Houston. I uh, didn't want to live in Houston, so <laughs> I joined the military. Oh, yep. And the military. I was in the military for four years, and uh, that's where I got my education, and that's what uh, actually where I got to travel a little bit because I got into broadcasting and television which I was excited after college, which I was really, really excited about and uh, really uh, was able to travel and move around. Um, So I feel very privileged because the family that I come from is very, very traditional Hispanic where uh, we didn't travel a lot. We didn't do many things outside of, you know, a driving, the family. <laughs> right, the dra- driving radius. And so it was really, really great for me to go to college and uh, get out of Houston, Texas and explore. Uh, and I, th- I think it's interesting because, you know, um, not to knock uh, my family particularly, but, you know, college was never something that was encouraged or, you know, talked about. And so uh, when I joined the military, it was like it became an ambition, you know, a goal of mine because, you know, most of the people in uh, the military were going to college. So uh, I feel very, very fortunate and lucky that I was able to take that route uh, in my my life in the beginning of my uh, career and be able to explore the different things that are out there. Sure, sure. So I'm I'm curious, uh, uh, what kind of work you're – your parents do, your, your yep. father? No, it's a great question because they were entrepreneurs. Okay. My dad was a machinist and my mom worked alongside him. And they had their own company for as long as I can remember. And they worked together for, you know, a very long time. My dad finally, I mean, he, he had it as a side job when he got a job with the Union uh, Southern Pacific, the train station, you know. Uh, sure. <laughs> and he retired, you know, with the, the train station uh, and got a really good pension and retirement out of that. But, you know, all of my career or my sorry, childhood is he uh, had worked a lot. Okay. You know, my, my family worked really, really hard to give us the things that, you know, they wanted us to have better than they did. Certainly. Sure. I mean, that's a typical, you know, uh, if you will, kind of immigrant story. You know, they I mean, regardless of what country you came and immigrated from here, whether it was, you know, Europe somewhere, Germany, uh, Mexico, Honduras, can't, whatever. Immigrants that came to this country, that first generation in particular, they were just all about the work. Hardworking, land of opportunity, make things work, one, two, three jobs, whatever it took to make a better life for your family. Okay, you know? so I have to add to that, uh, Perfecto, because, you know, this is very, very interesting with my family and the uproot because – when uh, my dad has a fourth grade education, okay, because he it comes from a family of 18. Whoa. <laughs> um, so he had to uh, drop out of school to help support the family, being a boy, okay? And then my mom did graduate high school, but she, and she comes from a family of 15, okay? So these are very <laughs> traditional Hispanic kind of Certainly, families, sure. big, big families, you know? Um, and so my parents, when they had us, you know, we were bilingual probably till we were about six. 
But my dad was so adamant that his children were not going to have an accent because of all the adversity that they came up across, okay? And so he was so adamant that, you know, he told my mom, no more. You're not teaching them Spanish. And this is back in the era, okay, because I'm not a young chicken. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so this is back, you know, in the 60s, 70s. And so they were very, very, or he was very adamant about it that, you know, not to teach his children Spanish, thinking, because, you know, this is, he has a fourth grade education. Right, sure. Thinking that this would benefit us when it actually hurt us, you know, in Certainly. the long run, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and and to this day, like, my my older sister is bilingual because her husband is, of course, Mexican. Uh, and my older uh, brother is uh, somewhat bilingual because his children are bilingual, you know. So it's funny how it evolves and how it comes back around and your parents think they were helping you when they were actually hurting you. Well, you know, it was a different time and age, you know, that that strong assimilation that they wanted you to have, they thought, an easier life uh, now that you're living in this country. But, you know, I I just want to share with my experience, you know, because I'm bilingual. I'm fortunate that my parents insisted that we speak Spanish at home and English wherever else. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, um, but I can remember when I was a young boy going to school and being punished by the teacher, my you know my second grade teacher would lock me in the cloakroom. She would lock me in the cloakroom all day. If she heard me speak Spanish at nine in the morning, I would not get out of the cloakroom until school let out. Wow! And I mean, it was it was horrible because you know I'm a second grade boy, and I she wouldn't even let me go out to go to the bathroom. So wow. often, you know, I had wet my pants right, right. in that cloakroom. My breakaway was in second grade. I decided one day that was not going to happen. I broke out of the cloakroom, ran across in front of her, ran to the boys' room. She didn't chase me into there. But that's what changed my life around because I learned as a second grade kid that if I'm going to do something that I think is right, I'm going to do it and not let an adult or somebody else detour me. So, right. so right. it's like right. now she did flunk me in second grade because <laughs> I stopped raising my hand to go right. do what right. I needed to do. But anyway, enough about me. But you know, but it was just a time in life where your father thought that he was doing you a favor in the family by getting you to assimilate faster and learn English because he was certain that that was going to you know be more of a greater benefit to you. That's correct. So it wasn't that he. Was a bad person. No, so. no, 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 no. And no. and again, I and I reflect a lot, you know, because you know he can't help that he had to leave school, and he can't help that sure. the life that he had to live, you know. But he certainly didn't want that life for his children, you know. I do know that. Right. I'm curious, uh, Houston. You mentioned Houston. Growing up in Houston, I've been in Houston a couple times in my life, or through Houston certainly. Beautiful big town, beautiful. What I did like was the heat and humidity was like unbearable, as I recall. So right, right. <laughs> That's why I am here now. This is home to me, you know. And it's interesting because uh, in my career, because I, I did move several times, I purposely came back to Wisconsin because I love Wisconsin. Not only because of the landscape and the climate, but because of the people. You know, it is a really, really wonderful place, and I've been to a lot of places. And this is just a great place to be. I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I'm from Wisconsin, you know, and uh, I grew up in Wisconsin since I was five years old, except for the four years I was in the U.S. Air Force. But the people, what you said there, you know, regardless, yeah, we've got our political infighting such, but often – you know, your neighbors, you know, I remember as a young boy moving into new neighborhoods because we moved regularly, you know, and initially it was a hardship. But over time, over short periods of time, those neighbors became part of the family. Absolutely. You know? They embraced you. Maybe they didn't at first know who you were or, or you didn't look like them. But, you know, I, I, I just want to – Repeat, Wisconsin yes. people are special. Oh, and they yes. have been all my life, too. Okay. Um, so, military. Okay. Uh, what drew you to join the U.S. military? Okay. So, 
It's interesting because um, I was really lured by, and I, I've heard this a couple times now, I was really lured by the commercials when, you know, it says, be all you can be, you know. There I was you really, really affected by that and lured in a positive way. And I thought, wow, I want that. I, th- I think that's cool. You know, and the uniform, you know, the Marines and, you know, all of that. And so I thought, you know, and, and I also – Knew I wanted to get out of Houston um, uh, because a lot of a lot of reasons. You know, you know, my life, uh, my growing up was not always pleasant. You know, there was a lot of toxic toxicity there. You know, and it's Houston. There's drugs. There's you know, it's crime. You know, when you're you know come from a family that is there. You know, there was five of us, and they were trying to you know make our life as normal as can be. You know, there's not a lot of money, you know, you, you, you're just getting by and you're not living in the best places, you know. And so uh, the military was a way for me to escape and to uh, better myself, you know. And so I was taking what my dad was trying to do for us and take it to the next level and do it for myself. And so I joined the military and I, I went into the Air Force and uh, it was going to be a career for me. It was absolutely going to be a career for me. Um, and I worked on missiles, you know, oh. what a transferable <laughs> skill there. <laughs> uh, so I worked on missiles and I thought I was going to travel the world and I was in Missouri at Whiteman Air Force Base. Um, and again, it was a great experience and I got to go to college and I got to meet a lot of wonderful people, um, and, you know, and it was really, really good. And I think it, what the, a lot of the benefits that I brought out was it helped me mature really fast, you know, and you're you're taught responsibility and you're taught leadership and you're taught, you know, goal setting. And I mean, a lot of things at a really, really young age, because I went in right after high school at 18. And so you're taught all these things, you know, these life Things that you probably mm-hmm. learn 20, 30 years later. Right. Catherine, let me let me just stop you there for a second because you've just outlined why I tell people if I were the king of the world here or whatever in, yep. in the US, every young able body, male or female, would serve in one of our, our military, you know, services. Right. And it's because of what you've outlined, you know how you grow, how you mature quickly, how you learn to take on responsibility, how you learn leadership. You know, I mean, all those skills that kids or people don't learn until way after, you know, they may be 30, 35, and they're still not sure how to handle uh, tough situations, right. you know. Right. I mean, there's this talk nowadays about, you know, snowflakes, mm-hmm. you know, that, oh, don't say anything bad because, you know, you might ruin their self-esteem. It's like, get over yourself. Right. You know, you grow from those situations. If you fall, you get up and you run again, you know. I mean, but so the military for me, that's where you learn that the fastest, the quickest, the easiest well, maybe not the easiest, but certainly you better learn it, you know. And so, right. so, so you learned that, and you expressed yourself so eloquently in in you know what the importance of that was and is. Oh yeah, and I would not, I would not replace it. I would not, if I had to do my life over again, I would certainly, definitely add the military again. I would certainly. I would just have a better, I would try to get a better choice of my job, (laughs) you know, uh, something a little more transferable, but that's okay. Cause you know, at the time when I joined Air Force needs came first and I get it, you know, cause I think I had pitched for a radio, um, operator position and, um, I got pushed, washed back because I had, uh, sprained my ankle broke, you know, they thought it, it broke my leg, but I sprained my ankle. And so then I, of course, that job went on and I had to get, you know, the next best thing, whatever uh, happened, you know uh, what I mean? Absolutely. And so and I was okay with it. Um, and it, it well, was funny. Catherine, uh, we're going to take a quick break here and, and, and bring you right back. But uh, first, our break. This is the Valor Latino program coming to you via News Talk 1130 WISN. Now more of Valor Latino with Perfecto Rivera on News Talk 1130 WISN. Welcome back this Sunday morning to the Valor Latino program. I am Perfecto Rivera, your host. 
My guest and friend with me this Sunday morning is Miss Catherine Ramirez. And Catherine and I got connected through the Veterans Chamber of Commerce, the director there, Saul Newton. Thank you so much, Saul. So, uh, again, Catherine, welcome back. Thank you. Well, you know, I love your enthusiasm, uh, Catherine. You, you you shared with us the reason why you got into the military and, and uh, you know, the... Uh, I think the, the great benefits, uh, how you stated those so eloquently, you know, and, and my comment about having everybody serve them, if you're able to, why not? Right. You know, <laughs> there's, there's uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, I want, oh, I wanted to step back for a second. You mentioned, you, you know, first of all, you didn't want to stay in Houston, one of the issues was the heat, humidity, yeah. but also crime and that kind of stuff, And but then you mentioned that you got stationed in misery. Uh, excuse me, Missouri. And that's actually what they call it was misery. <laughs> I, I know. I, I've been there. That's why okay. I said that. It's like misery. Uh, but it, it, again, it's a beautiful state. But yes. for me, it, the, the heat humidity was just a little overbearing for me. But okay, so so you you joined the U.S. Air Force. I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran myself. Awesome. So, um, Arkansas is where I spent most of my Great. time talking about heat and humidity, but you know, but I did go overseas a number of times on TDYs and such. Um, the military was good to you. Oh, I loved it. It was great. And again, I thought I was going to be a lifer. I thought I was going to stay in for a long. You and I both. Yeah, yeah. longer than I had uh, stayed, and it was interesting because. Um, I made my decision to get out probably halfway through my the four years that I was in, um, and it was a tough decision, but it was it was a decision I made, you know, because um, I really did want to travel the world, and I thought the military could do that for me. Okay, and um, but I also knew because I had a flavor of the college life. I I thought okay, there's something bigger and better too. And so, th- again, that's why I was challenged by the decision I made. And it, and so it was interesting before I, uh, I think it was three months, three or four months before I uh, got my papers to leave, you know, to get out, mm-hmm. I got orders to uh, Italy. <laughs> and I was like, wow, well, you know. Now they and that you. was like really hard because I was like, Italy, wow. And I would have had it extend, of course, you know. But sure. I was like, you know, I made my my mind up. I couldn't go back. You know, oh, wow. but but it was good. It was it was good, um, and it and it it this all, you know, in my my mind, it all built to where I am at today. It built my career. It 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 led me in a direction where I'm at. You know, it gave me the foundation to do all the things that I did to be the entrepreneur that I am today. Okay, even though it probably was a longer route for me. But it, I think it was a longer route for me because I was trained to be structured, to be goal setting from the military and to be loyal. I had so much loyalty and you could not break my loyalty. And so my, my loyalty, you know, to the military was intense because they taught me that. They, I was trained that. And so and that's why it was a cha- it was a struggle to get out. Um. So, um, so after the military, I got into uh, the uh, to finish my education, and I went and finished my education at the last place that I was at, which was uh, in Missouri, the Central University. Oh, okay, and, and so I'm curious. Uh, so now you're in college. Yep. And your course, uh, uh, you what were, were the courses that you were uh, picking up? I mean, uh, what was your career path? There? Originally, I was going to go to law school, so a lot of uh, political sci. I was originally, and then uh, I had a few elective classes where I took uh, advertising and marketing, and I was sold. I was like, oh my god. Oh, my God, I probably need to go down this route. So then I I just got a business management degree because I thought, well, let me get a a general business management. And if I pursue the law thing after this, it would ebb and flow with both ways. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Uh, And so that's what I did. Wow. Okay, Kat, you know, I've I've been negligent here because you (laughs) shared with me a story. We we had a little uh, exchange here with uh, some of the information you shared with me that uh, died on my 
uh, on the laptop here. So okay. uh, just <laughs> if the audience is listening, say, hey, you know, there's a little. Uh, but, okay, so we connected through the Chamber of Commerce, the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. That's correct. Uh, but your business, let's talk about your business now. Okay. Uh, advertising consultant. Uh, and you own a company. It's called um, Bid Ties. Add Bid Ties. Add Bid. Yeah. Add bid. Let's go again. Add Bid Ties. ties. Yes. All one word. Yes. Okay. So um, I was so I I was in the advertising arena for about twenty five twenty seven years. Okay, and I think I got to the point where uh, I hit a glass ceiling. Probably because of maybe my color. Okay. Beautiful I don't know. color we share. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> but I did, I hit a glass ceiling uh, because I would pitch and pitch and pitch for the next opportunity. Uh, and even though I had a very successful record, I was not getting it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put my own faith in my own hands and I'm going to start my own business. And I started Advertise. And I created Advertise as an advocacy for small to mid sized businesses, probably more small businesses. Because what I saw in the corporate world in selling advertising, when I was in advertising, I saw a lot of we walked away from business because I didn't spend enough. And I wanted to create a business model that I don't care how much money you have. I'm going to help you. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to be your advocate. I'm going to consult you. And I'm going to teach you. Because I would rather see your business grow and blossom than to walk away from it because it wasn't enough money for me. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And that's why I created Abitize because um, it was all about standing up for the little guy. And making sure they were the ones, they're the ones that need more the help, more the guidance. They're the ones that need the advertising because they're just starting out or, you know, they need the help because they don't have the resources. And that's what I created and that's what I'm trying to do. It sounds like you're doing it very well. You know, my conversation with Saul uh, and uh, Aaron. Yes, Aaron. Aaron Aaron, Aaron at the... uh, uh, Veterans Chamber of Commerce. You know when when I had called and they said no 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 not us. You want to, you want to interview Catherine Ramirez. So she and how they phrase is no she's our shining star. So <laughs> well and I should probably talk about the alignment with the chamber because uh, the chamber has been a really really great partner for me uh, and I am excited to be a member of their organization because I feel like they align with the same missions that I have where they're advocating for veterans you know and they're supporting veterans and they're trying to educate veterans uh, and the community about hiring veterans and why you should hire veterans you know and if you heard any part of the beginning of this, you know, show you know and hear that veterans are very, they're, they're conditioned to be your best employees, you know, because of the structure that was embedded in each of us, you know, we were totally conditioned, embedded to be machines, to be warriors, (laughs) you know what I mean? To be loyal. That's a, that's a good part of that, that loyalty, you know, I mean, I remember, yeah, the trauma of basic training, if you will, you know, and we all went through that. And we were there, you know, for those 90 days, I mean, stressful, you know, but it was impactful. But those other soldiers became your new family. Yes. And you learned and they learned to care for you. If you, uh, uh, They had your back as you had their back. You know, and there was just a camaraderie that was built through that difficult process that I think um, was a a, a total enlightenment of life. Yes. Yeah. And I would let me add to that because it's something that you can't find anywhere else, like ever. Because through my, you know, because I was, I drank the Kool Aid of corporate America and I did all that because I was, you know, fed and told. You need to climb the corporate ladder. You need to stay with the company, you know, 30 years, whatever, and get that gold star, you know. (laughs) But, you know, the brotherhood and sisterhood of military far, far exceeds that because you do know someone has your back. They always have your back. And corporate America is completely opposite. It is absolutely the opposite. And and I think 
to me, it was a little bit to me of a, a shock, a culture shock, you know, a, a corporate culture shock for me. Sure. Because it's not the same. <laughs> it's not at all. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. And, you know, I'm so glad that you came to be my guest uh, the Sunday morning. Thank you, Saul, and thank you, Aaron, for uh, insisting that I give you a call, which I'm so happy of. I, I want to uh, share something here that you shared with me as part of uh, the information about who you are. And just the last line that I want to read, it said, and this was from Saul's office, Catherine believes every business should have the resources to stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. She believes no business will be left behind. Okay, it almost sounds like a military it statement, does. doesn't it? <laughs> it does, if I, if I listen to you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, again, so Catherine, uh, people want to reach out to you. How can they connect with you? Um, well, they can certainly go to the website, advertise.com. But can I do a shout out for the Veterans Chamber? Absolutely. Because uh, they do have a few events coming up, and I would love to see some new faces and uh, really get to meet other people that want to support the veteran community. Their big event coming up is the Veterans in the Workforce for Summit, which is Friday, September 29th. They also have a command post. Veterans in the Workforce Summit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Friday, September 27th. Um, at 11 a.m., and it is um, sponsored by Baird Corp., which is awesome. It's a great event. Absolutely. I've been to it, and it's wonderful. Um, they also have a very unique pos- uh, opportunity, too. They have a command post where 10 businesses get selected, and they provide rent, resources, training, and coaching. Wow. Wow. Uh, you have to apply to, you know, of course, be selected. Um, but it's the only one in the state of Wisconsin, and I, I think it's a great way to support veteran businesses. And that's with the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And they can find that information out on the Internet. That's correct, and it's called Command Posts. Fabulous. Well, Catherine, we've come to the close of our show. Ask our listening audience to join us the following Sunday. This is the Valor Latino program coming to you via News Talk 1130 WISN.